the world's energy needs are diverse and abundant, and therefore our energy solutions really should be as well. We can look at the molten salt reactors as a really unique and powerful opportunity to fill a key position within a diverse and green energy portfolio with a technology that's both very flexible and agile in terms of how we can deploy it. Our team's big goal, therefore, is to support the near-term deployment of this technology. Dr. Manalines is a senior research scientist at Pacific Northwest National Laboratory with experience in the design and deployment of online monitoring and sensor technology. We've got a lot of different teams building different capabilities. We have folks looking at front end or the operation of reactors. So folks like Bill Glass looking at ultrasonics, water vessel integrity or heat exchanger monitoring. Folks like Bruce McNamara, who is looking at kilogram scale production of different salts and contact links are right there. And we also have folks looking at the other end of the reactors. So what's coming out of them? That includes Praveen, who's doing some really cool work with his team looking at metal organic frameworks for off-gas capture. So folks like Brian Riley, who are looking at waste farms out of the back. And that is by no way a complete list of everything we're doing at p but I do highlight these four opportunities because they're a really cool example of systems that my team can integrate with and build tools that help those folks run, deploy um, their technology in a way that is better, faster, safer, and cheaper. Today, I'll be giving an overview on some of the work I and my team are doing developing online monitoring sensors for molten salt reactors and supporting systems online monitoring tools or sensors that we plug directly into a chemical process so that we can see in situ and real time what is going on in that process. We use it for everything from fundamental characterization of a process to enabling more efficient process design and optimization, all the way out to supporting safe and cost-effective deployment of various processes and technologies. Now, online monitoring is a very broad topical area. There's a lot of tools out there to meet a lot of needs. Today, I'm going to focus on the work that we do looking at tools for chemical composition analysis. So, for example, tools that we use to say within this reactor off-gas stream, is iodine present? How much iodine is there? What oxidation state is it in? What speciation is it exhibiting? Ultimately, is this process running the way we want and need it to run? Now, one of the best tools that we love for doing this type of work is optical spectroscopy. That's all about getting light into your process, looking at how light interacts with your material, and then gleaning your process information from that. And it's also a very flexible technology, optical spectroscopy. We can take it and engineer it into a lot of different system matrices, as well as across a lot of different system scales. And that actually gives us a lot of flexibility in terms of where and how we can apply it. And we've taken opportunities to build deploy, utilize tools for a couple of different areas of interest to the molten salt realm. Um, That includes gas treatment as well as salt handling. And again, our big goal here is to build tools that help the safe, cost-effective, and near-term deployment of these technologies and ultimately MSRs themselves. Now, I'm going to go through a couple of areas here, a couple of examples. I'll start off with what we're doing in the gas phase, where particularly looking at gas phase treatment, I want to highlight that This is a really exciting area for us. We're doing work predominantly in the Advanced Reactor Technology Campaign in collaboration with other national laboratories, in particular with Oak Ridge National Laboratory. This is a really exciting opportunity for us to build tools that can meet two big goals. The first goal is we want tools that researchers can use as they develop off-gas treatment processes so they can develop those processes better, faster, really know how to optimize, when to optimize, and ultimately get that deployed system out the door sooner. But this also meets another big goal. By looking at these tools now in the development phase, we really lay the foundation necessary to get these tools deployed with full-scale technology in the future, providing a tool for operators to understand and ultimately control their processes. Now, I mentioned this is in collaboration with ORNL, and there's a couple of points of collaboration I'll hit out. The first is um, the work we're doing in building complementary sensors. So at PNNL, we're actually looking at molecular-based approaches that give us complex speciation information about a gas phase. So we can see things like I2, H2, D2, HD, we can fun species. At ORNL, they're looking at atomic approaches, and I'd like to direct your attention to Hunter Andrews if you want to ask questions about that. But ultimately, this is elemental information. 
And when you combine elemental with molecular, what you get is a comprehensive analysis of your process stream. So a very powerful understanding of what's going on in that process. We've been using um, a couple of different vibrational approaches in the past to go after different species. That includes using things like FKR was a good tool for following IPL or Brahman for following I2. And ultimately, we've demonstrated that we can build very powerful quantitative tools that have really great limits of detection for a lot of these key regulatory or process control species. You've got some publications shown here. These two were lucky enough to get cover graphics for the cool images are, but we've really been taking this technology and expanding on it so we can apply it to additional areas of interest. A big example is looking at hydrogen isotopes. So this Last fiscal year, we've really been digging into um, looking at species like H2, D2, HD, and so on, where all of these species have their own unique fingerprints that we can use to identify and ultimately quantify these targets in the system. And you can actually see just a quick example of a fingerprint of D2 here. And what's really fun is an experiment right here where we actually followed the dynamic mixing of a couple of species in the gas phase. So you can actually follow those species as they change ratios within a given process. So again, you understand and know what's going on in your process. And I'll, I'll highlight here one of our early career members, Heather Felmy, doing some of this really great work here. She's working hard to write this up. Hopefully this will be out in published form and available to folks soon. But I do also want to point out that another big aspect of what we're doing is taking this approach and improving our limits of detection through better cell design, ultimately allowing us to start going after smaller quantities of of tritium is really our big goal, but a lot of fun work there. We're also using an opportunity to collaborate with ORNL to start testing the materials of our probes. So uh, Kevin Robb has been our, our contact out there, and big thanks to him and his team who have allowed us to engulf several of our probe components into the liquid salt test out at ORNL. This is an opportunity for us to really see how these materials perform in the field. They leak, if our seals are good, if our windows corrode. Really great work there, and we're excited to start seeing how those probes hold up to those harsh conditions. We're also doing some pretty exciting work building towards mass balance capabilities. So a big goal that we have is to be able to follow the gas phase of the system, but also perhaps follow the molten salt of the system. Right here, we've got a really exciting example of uh, a mock-up of a scrubber system where you've got a molten sodium hydroxide, a eutectic in that scrubber. And the idea is you'd like to be able to follow a species as it makes that phase transition from the gas phase to that scrubber melt, ultimately allowing you to see what species are being caught up, what species are moving through. Again, testing and deploying that system better, faster, safer, cheaper. We mocked something up on the small scale where we could follow both phases simultaneously. And essentially that allowed us to actually look at species as they made that phase transition. For example, this plot, I know there's a lot going on, but ultimately what it shows is that in that gas phase, when we introduce carbon dioxide, we can actually see that species start to migrate into the salt and form carbonate. Again, a really exciting tool for us to start following those phase transitions from these different systems. This work was recently published by Don, one of our early career team members. We also had a really great student engagement here, Molly, um, Sui student, and that's recently been accepted to ACS Omega. So folks who are interested, please reach out. Happy to get the paper to you. But this sets us up nicely to kind of transition a little bit from the gas phase to start talking about salt melts themselves. Um, we are taking this technology to start looking at melts. Uh, we're doing this in a couple of areas, but most predominantly, or what I'll really talk about today, is the work that we're doing in the Advanced Reactor Safeguards Campaign. The goal here is to evaluate whether or not optical tools can provide meaningful or useful information for material control and accounting within the reactor. And we've been utilizing a small-scale setup. You can see a, a schematic of one here that lets us look at salt, evaluate how we perform, and really start building quantitative tools for these systems so that we can start looking at the uncertainties and reliabilities of our mission. We've been really focused on uranium. You can see a couple of pictures of some fun uranium salts here in the, the plus four and the plus six forms. It's just to give you guys a quick look at what some of that data looks like. And we've actually been able to follow in situ some of the dynamic chemistry of uranium, going between different oxidation states, flipping between the very unique fingerprints between those species. We can follow three, four, six, and we can do that in the presence of different F elements or other interference or complexities within the salt. So 
a lot of really exciting work. And I'll, I'll highlight Shamir Branch here, another one of our early career team members. He's recently given talks to ACS and that's just absolutely fantastic work that she's doing. I want to take a moment here, back up from both the salts and the gas and talk kind of generally speaking, what's a big point we need to be considering with these sensors? I should mention that we built intelligent sensor systems. And what that means is that we build tools that are ultimately very useful to a researcher and an operator. Any sensor is only as valuable as the information you get out of it. And most folks operating these systems don't want to see a complex series of optical spectra or any other output of pure complex data from a sensor. What they want is that real time and easily understood output of information. So concentrations of your targets, ratios of your redox states and so on. And that's actually the biggest component of what our team does at PNNL is we build tools that can take in that complex data and output that useful information. Now we tend to like approaches like chemometric analysis. We start by analyzing the process that we're after. What are our targets? What are our ideal operating conditions? What are our non-ideal operating conditions? And that really informs um, the development and collection of an optical library that captures all of those fingerprints. And that library is used to build chemometric models. These are multivariate tools, algorithms that can ultimately quantify our targets. Now, these models can go ahead and be deployed with our online monitoring sensors so that we can collect, again, that complex optical data online and in real time. And when we apply those algorithms, we output that real-time output of information. So your concentration of your target, your ratio of redox states, and so on. And it's always important to highlight that when we talk about deploying this out in the real field, you need to make sure you get that last arrow in there. Maintenance, it's always important as you learn more about your process, as your process changes over time, let's say corrosion products or vision products grow in over time, you update and maintain those models so you can maintain very accurate, reliable, and robust quantification of your targets. I'll just again highlight that PNNL is collaborating with whomever we can to develop and demonstrate online monitoring tools that really enable the characterization of different processes. Ultimately, again, that goal being to support both the initial development and demonstration of processes, as well as the ultimate deployment of processes. We've had several successful deployments or demonstrations on both gas phase and salt phase systems. All of those are leading into our goals to support the timely, safe, and cost-effective deployment of MSRs and related technology. And uh, towards that end, online monitoring tools are an enabling technology. So we're always looking for new opportunities to collaborate, engage, or learn what new challenges are out there that we can address and help with. So please reach out if you have ideas or questions. I'll thank my team at PNNL, as well as the folks we're collaborating with at ORNL, um, our students and faculty visiting guests will highlight that training the next generation is huge for us. You'll see pictures of several students throughout the pictures here. And with that, I'll thank everyone here for their time and attention.